Okay, and uh, number five here, um, we're asked uh, to find the relative extrema and the concavity uh, and flexion points, where the graph is increasing and decreasing and all that good stuff. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, find the uh, relative extrema and uh, if, where the graph is increasing and decreasing. So I'm going to uh, start by taking the derivative. and uh, setting this derivative equal to zero and solving for x and uh, I'm going to factor out a 20 and an x so I put a 20 and an x out of here we're just left with x squared minus pull a 20 out of 60 and uh, we're going to be left with what? A 3. And uh, pull that x out. So we don't have an x there anymore. All right? And then uh, we set both these factors equal to 0. And therefore, in this particular factor here, x is equal to 0. And then we set this factor equal to 0. All right? And this ends up being x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. Well, that ought to be fun. Okay. And then uh, what we're going to do is draw some number line and uh, label uh, 0 number line and negative square root of 3 and positive square roots of 3. Okay, what you need to know here is uh, approximately what is the square root of 3. So I guess uh, either you'll know that off the top of your head or type that into a calculator uh, really quick. But uh, the square root of 3 approximately is um, 1.73 and some uh, all kinds of stuff after that. 1.7. So we need to choose a number to the left of this. How about we choose negative? Two. Actually, I've been doing this in black, so I need to kind of stick with stick with that. All right. And what did I say this was? Negative one point seven three. Okay. So how about uh, we can choose a negative one here? And uh, this is so one point seven three. So one and then two. So in this time, uh, we've got uh, four test points. We need to uh, test out, and we're going to take these test points. And, uh, plug them in now into the derivative and uh, I suggest that you always take these guys and plug them into the factored uh, derivative because it'll be a whole lot easier determining the sign just uh, by doing it in your head without having to plug all this stuff into the calculator every time. So anyway, we plug uh, negative 2 in uh, into this right here. So this is going to be a negative number. Plugging negative 2 in here, you get to 4, and 4 minus 3 is negative 1. Or no, 4 minus 3 is a positive 1. So we get to a negative times a positive, and a negative times a positive is negative. So that graph is decreasing up to a negative square root of 3. Then we take negative 1 and plug it in. So we're going to have a negative over here on the left. Plugging negative 1 in squared is a positive 1, and 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. And so we have a negative times a negative. And that's positive, so this graph is increasing. And then we take 1 and plug it in. So this is positive, and this is going to be negative, and a positive times a negative is negative. Uh, eventually, you'll get the hang of it. Okay, and then take 2, plug it in. You get a positive, right? 20 times 2 is positive. And then uh, 2 uh, squared is 4, and 4 minus 3 is a 1. And so you get a positive times a positive, so it's increasing. Now, I don't, uh, don't think that just because it's uh, decreasing, it's going to always be increasing over here on this side, because that's uh, definitely not always the case. Okay, and so we can see here, then, that we have a uh, minimum at negative square root of 3, a maximum at x is 0, and another minimum at square root of 3. So we're going to... Uh, plug uh, these guys in and find these actual points on the graph so we know that at negative square root of 
3, and then uh, you're plugging in negative square root of 3 into the original function, and uh, that means into this guy. Yes, you're going to be plugging in negative square root of 3 at n4 x to the 4th. Um, I guess I, uh, I'll do that here. So f of negative square root of 3 is equal to, all right, and so we have All right, so we have uh, five parentheses, negative square root of three, right? And it's all raised to the fourth power um, minus 30 times negative square root of three, and that's all squared. Okay. <clears throat> now you're you're uh, you're taking this negative and raising it to the fourth power, so that negative is just going to disappear. And uh, remember, this is really three to the one half, right? And if we raise it all to the fourth power, a half times four just becomes three squared. So as you can see, this is all just going to become uh, nine because three squared is nine, and uh, right. Um, okay, so we end up having 5 times 3 squared. Now remember this negative right here, if it's raised to the fourth power, it's just going to disappear. Um, we have negative square roots of 3 squared, so that square root's going to disappear, and so is that negative because it's the positive. And then you have this negative 30, and so that just becomes 3. And so we have 5 times 9 minus 90. And 5 times 9 is 45 minus 90. Right, this is negative 45. Now I'm not going to go into detail on all of these just because of the time limit um, and the constraint I have here. But uh, so we could then say now that at the point negative square root of 3 comma negative 45, we have a minimum. All right. And uh, of course you're going to do the same thing here, plugging 0 back into the original. So 0 comma f of 0, and of course that's an easy one to determine. Plug 0 in and you're going to get uh, what 0 out, right? So this is just 0 comma 0. And this happens to be a maximum. And then we plug in a negative square root of 3. And I'm not going to work this out. So 0 comma f of square root of 3. I think I might have said negative. I meant to say square root of 3. And, uh, and, and you figure that out, right? But uh, it is a minimum. So we label that as a minimum. All right, now the second thing we want to do here is uh, 